Fox Island, Washington. 6.4 square miles of secluded neighborhoods, towering Douglas fir trees and small farms. Islanders in this corner of Pierce County enjoy a relaxed rural lifestyle and picturesque views of Mount Rainier, the Olympic Mountains, and Puget Sound. First settled by non-natives in 1856, the Fox Island lifestyle became more convenient with the arrival of electricity in 1930 and the Fox Island Bridge in 1954. To bring electricity to the island, Fox Island residents banded together to construct 10 miles of power lines. And in October 1930, Penn Light board members appropriated $1,456 for the laying of a submarine cable from Cromwell to Fox Island under Hail Passage. The cable was only single phase, suitable for powering lights and small 110 voltage appliances. But the result was electrifying. In 1952, Penn Light Superintendent Oak Lodholm led the way in replacing the aging original cable with a new two-phase submarine line. At 240 volts, it could accommodate electric ranges, heaters, and water heaters, as well as future growth. In May 1970, a third cable upgrade was installed, a three-phase line with even greater capacity for the growing population. In 1985, a secondary cable was attached to the Fox Island Bridge, capable of meeting all the island's needs, except during unusually cold weather should the primary cable fail. After 40 years of service, the third submarine cable under Hail Passage has reached the end of its life expectancy, and a question arose, what kind of cable system would best meet the long-term needs of Fox Island for the 21st century? Penlight explored two options in replacing the 40-year-old cable under Hail Passage. A traditional submarine cable along the bottom of Puget Sound had a lower installation cost and a shorter 12-week installation period. On the downside, it involved a longer permitting process, greater environmental impact, and a modest 30-year lifespan of the cable. Boring under Puget Sound was the more expensive installation option and entailed a longer installation period. On the plus side, it offered a quicker permitting process with low environmental impact. The cable will have a longer 50-year life expectancy in conduit with reduced cost for future cable replacement. We're on Fox Island, Kettner's Point, and directly over the alignment for the horizontal directional drilling project. The boring will be approximately 60 feet below the seabed of Hales Passage, which will extend all the way across Hales Passage to our exit and termination point on Cromwell Beach. Uh, this is a horizontal directional drilling rig. It is a 380,000 pound machine, uh, has 36,000 foot pounds of torque, rotational torque, and uh, 380,000 foot pounds of push and pulling force. Designed specifically for horizontal directional drilling. The drill spring was pushed on through from Kettner's Point and uh, directionally drilled in a U-shaped fashion beneath the sales passage and was directed uh, right up to this point and they came within about 30 feet of the antenna target. So I'm on this job because there were uh, a lot of uh, geologic constraints to this work. This is all, all glacial deposits and it's a variety of, uh, from clays up through very coarse gravels. Uh, you basically had post-ice materials that were very hard, and then after the, the glaciers all left here in the channel form, uh, there's uh, alluvial type materials that have deposited out there. Was there any concern about hitting the honey bucket over here, Colin? I don't think there was a bit of concern about that. <laughs> We just exited about uh, an hour ago and the contractor was busy making preparations in order to dream the hole and make it larger for insertion of the steel casing.
pipe that we're looking at has been, uh, uh, there's three segments totaling uh, 3,520 feet. So that gives a little extra uh, length of pipe. The overall length of the project, however, from a circuit standpoint is right around 4,000 feet. Well, we're, we're pulling in the cable from here to Fox Island. It's a long pole, 4,000 feet. You know, we've got some equipment here that's uh, specialized. Okay, after we complete installing the casing, the conduit, and cable, and terminating the vault, the design engineer, Rob Richardson, will take over and complete the circuit uh, tying into the existing overhead uh, feeder circuit. And we're standing here today having installed three lengths successfully, uh, tensions well under the limits, and uh, we would expect full service life out of this cable 40 years plus. What we're starting with is a high reliability product, but that's well and good. What these projects really require is the team effort of the utilities expertise the consulting firm if they're involved, and uh, finally, a team in the field that can successfully install a product like this. This is a two and a half million dollar project, uh, the largest single uh, engineering and construction project for the Greater Big Harbor Peninsula by Peninsula Light Company. This project, as Spence mentioned, was complete on time and under budget. And it could, <laughs> thank you. It, it is unique, I'm very impressed. I have been in this business for a long time and this was a unique project and well done.